Want my help getting a robotics automation or tech career at a Fortune 500 company or innovative startup so that you can finally level up your earnings, work on the coolest projects ever, and have practically unlimited earning potential for the rest of your career? Listen up. My robotics mentorship program is officially open. This is a 90-day career intensive where we get crystal clear on your dream robotics job, reinvent your professional brand, and fill in the technical gaps so that you can get a six-figure-plus career at the hottest companies on the planet. If you're interested, go to learnrobotics.org slash podcast to sign up. We'll text a bit to see if you're a fit and then get you registered if it makes sense. Again, go to learnrobotics.org slash podcast. Now on to today's episode. Welcome back to another episode of Learn Robotics with Liz. Today, we're going to be talking about the difference between academic programs versus real world on the job style training. And if you're the kind of person you're, you know, a high achieving, high performing professional, and you're thinking about, you know, leveling up or adding something to your career or to your resume or to your arsenal so that you can stand out from the crowd and be more competitive in a job market where honestly, everybody seems to be the same, right? Everybody's having the same skills. They're going to the same schools. They're doing the same things. And you want to be different, right? You want to stand out. You want to be on the top of the hiring manager or the company's mind for that dream role in robotics or automation. And I'm going to share with you kind of the difference between taking a certification program versus working with a mentor and how that is different because it's taken me honestly 10 years to figure out the difference. And if I can share this with you in the next 10 to 15 minutes and save you 10 years from having to learn it, then you are going to be so much farther ahead in your career than I was um, because it's there, there is a difference and I'm going to explain to you the pros and cons and maybe when in your career you would want to consider using these to your advantage. Okay, so we have your typical academic option, right? So you could go to university, you could do a two-year degree, you could do an associate's, you could do a bachelor's, a four-year degree, you could do a master's, you could go research and get a PhD. And, and I'm talking tech right here. I'm talking some sort of engineering. I'm talking some sort of science or, you know, something with heavy technical competencies is what I'm talking about primarily in this, in this context, right? Because this is a show about robotics and robotics engineering careers. So we'll, we'll kind of lean into that. And in academia, and I'm speaking from experience, when you enroll into a degree program, and we're going to use the bachelor's degree because it's pretty standard. You know, a lot of people, they get a bachelor's of science and some sort of engineering. I have one in robotics engineering. And you sign up, you pay your $50,000 a year or more, whatever, your tuition, And you're going to be taking classes, right? You're going to be looking through a syllabus. You figure out what kind of degree you want. You see what kind of courses you need to take to get that degree. And you're going to go through a course of study or some sort of um, curriculum book. And you're going to be picking out classes and reading about what it is you're going to be learning in that class, right? And then you show up to these classes. Some of them are lecture style. Some of them are lab style. And you're there to learn whatever topic they're throwing your way, right? So your job is to, you know, figure out, one, if you want to take that course, and two, what is in the course, and three, what you're going to be learning. And it's a very sequential, like, take class A, then take class B, then take class C, and then D, E, F, G. You know, they just keep, you know, they give you, like, a cue of all of these things that you need to take to satisfy the requirement of their degree. And this is all pretty standard across curriculum, right? So when when these schools, they come up with what are their requirements, they're all thinking about accreditation and what the requirements are for developing the next generation of talent. And it usually comes down to some version of education standards, right? You must be competent in A, you must be competent in B, you must be competent in C. And then they break these down even further. So A.1, A.2, A.3, and then they're basically setting up classes to fulfill these requirements, right? And so it's a very linear, very almost like tree-like structure where you're just taking a bunch of bunch of stuff. You have to take all these requirements if you want the degree. 
Whereas in a mentoring program, like what I do, there's no curriculum. And it's, it's like amazing to me that people would think that I would have a curriculum. It's like, I am working with people directly. Like if you came to me, you listening right now, if you came to me and you said, Liz, I would like some help getting a six figure career in robotics and automation. Uh, what do I need to do? What is the curriculum? If you asked me what the curriculum is, I would say, I don't know. What do you want to do? What kind of role do you want? What do you want to be working on? What kind of money do you want to be making? Where do you want to live? There are so many variables at play because we're dealing with your life. And the thing that academic students don't really understand is that you can take more academic classes and that's great and everything, but the real world doesn't operate academically. So if you are an engineer, let's just say you work in industrial automation and you're responsible for manufacturing equipment and you have certain production requirements that you have to hit, certain KPIs that keep you on target and your machine goes down, is there a curriculum for that? Is there, is there a class for that? No, that's what you're hired to do. So, so the program that I've set up is designed to be more real time because life is real time. Life is not academia. Academia is just there to get you a fundamental set of skills. And your job is to take those fundamental skills and figure out how they can be applied in the real world. And the difference, the biggest difference between doing an academic program versus working with a mentor and doing career advancement or career development is the end goal for academia is a degree. It's a piece of paper. You are signing up for that for a credential. You are not signing up for a career. There's a difference. Having a credential doesn't mean you have a career. And when you work in a career advancement program, your end goal is a career. You are not getting a credential necessarily. Now, if you need, you know, references and if you need, you know, to put something on your resume, that, that totally can be worked out. But that's besides the point. If you are joining a career advancement program to get a certification, you're doing it wrong. You should be joining a career advancement program to advance your career. Your outcome, your reward should be a better paying role in a job you love that you are excited about. Because if you can't do those three things, why advance your career? You should just stay where you're at. You should just be happy with the regular things that you have in your regular life because it doesn't make sense to join a mentoring program if you don't want to get to the next level. Now, if you do want to get to the next level, the best way to do that is to learn from somebody that's already done it. And I will speak from experience. I have hired lots of mentors this year. I've been like on a mentoring binge because I love learning from other people that are farther ad farther ahead of of me and where I want to go in my career and in my future. And there's absolutely no better way than to shrink the timeline and shrink the learning curve of something new that you want to achieve than to just go talk to somebody and work with somebody and that has the network, that has the connections, that has exactly what you want in your life and work with them. It's faster from a time standpoint. It yeah, it costs some money up front. I will be honest, like anything of value costs money, right? Because the higher the, the cost, the more valuable it is, right? The, that's just common knowledge, right? Um, but at the end of the day, you're not spending, you know, four years in a program going through a list of things that somebody else thinks that you should know to advance your career. If you have a bachelor's degree and you're listening to this and you have a science background and you're competent in what you do, and you can articulate it, and you want to get to the next level, you should be finding a mentor, whether it's me or somebody else in the industry that does exactly what you want to be doing, and you should be working with that person. Create your own apprenticeship. There's a reason why electricians have apprenticeships. It's to work alongside somebody that's farther ahead of them so that they can quickly get up to speed with exactly what they need to be doing and be able to handle whatever is thrown at them in the real world. Academia and research is not the real world. If you want a corporate career, research is not the same as a corporate career. Now, there are some companies where they focus on research. Company culture is a little bit different. 
but their end goal is different. If you want to be working on the latest and greatest factory 4.0 initiatives at some of the top manufacturing companies in the world doing robotics and automation, you know, high volume, low volume, that is totally different than sitting in a classroom going through a syllabus. Those are not the same thing. And if you want to be a lifelong student, then you should go back to university. You should go and get a PhD. You should go more research. But if you are tired of being a student and you actually want to be paid for your expertise and your competencies, you should get into my mentorship program or you should find somebody that has a solid reputation in the robotics and automation industry, uh -huh, me, and you should reach out and you should get their help. And I'm only saying this and I'm being so transparent because if I had just known this five years ago, 10 years ago, my career would have exploded so much faster than I could have ever imagined. So many doors would have been opened up for me a lot sooner if I had gotten help and I had just gotten out of my own way and actually gotten help from somebody a couple of steps ahead of me. And that is what we do in my program. There is no syllabus. So if you're asking me what the syllabus is, there is no syllabus. The way it works is we figure out what experience you have, whether that's academic experience, uh, work experience, technical experience, internships, careers, whatever. Then we figure out exactly what your dream life looks like. So what are you doing in robotics? What company are you working at? Where do you work? Do you work remote? Do you work in person? Like, what do you want to be doing? What kind of money do you want to be making? What kind of house do you want to live in? Like, these things matter, right? Because if you want to live in a beautiful house with four bedrooms and three bathrooms and a four-car garage and have, you know, a family and be able to do nice things and go on vacation, you know, signing up for a $50,000 a year job does not make sense. It doesn't match. They're not congruent. And so we figure out what it is you want. We figure out what it is you have. We figure out all the technical skills that you would need to be competent and be a top candidate to be positioned correctly for that role, for that dream role. And then we help you get there. It's just that simple. It's really that simple. That is the process that I walk my students through. You don't need to go back. Now, if, if you want to be a researcher and you want to have PhD on the end of your name, you want to be a doctor of robotics, um, that's very, very um, admirable as well. There's no wrong answer. It's just how do you go through the approach? What are the next steps? Because if you're the kind of person that thinks you need a PhD or a master's to get a really great career in robotics, making six, six figures plus, you know, 150,000, 200,000 in automation, if you know what you're doing and you can articulate it correctly, there are opportunities out there. And people are not taking advantage of these opportunities. And if you know how to take advantage of these opportunities, then you can be in the running to get those roles. So you don't need to go through another six years of schooling to get there. It's, it's not linear in the sense that the number of years you put in is equivalent to the amount of money you make. You can have a bachelor's degree with a few years of experience, one to two years of experience, and if you actually know what you're doing and you're good at articulating, you will get moved up, you will get noticed. And you could honestly be making more than the people that have PhDs that have been in school for 15 years because you actually have real world experience and that is the difference. So this episode was really about me talking about the difference between being more academically focused and being more real world focused. The program that I run is more real world we're dealing with real people. We're dealing with the actual process, all the stuff that they don't teach you in engineering school. And I'm speaking specifically to my people that are in engineering school or experiencing engineering school. They do a very good job of teaching you the technicals. They do a crap job of teaching you actually how to position yourself and talk so that you can land some of these awesome roles and actually get paid for all the work that you've been learning. And I'm speaking to that version of myself that was sitting, you know, at 3 a.m. in the robotics lab, ripping my hair out, trying to find a semicolon that was missing in a piece of code. That is technical competency. You should be paid for that. And in my program, I'm going to show you exactly what you can do to finally upgrade and reinvent your career in robotics. 90 day program, robotics career intensive. If you want in, there's going to be a link in the show notes. You can check that out. 
um, apply for that if you think if you think this is going to help you. If you want to get out of the academic trap and you want to actually start getting paid for your work, then let me know. I can point you in the right direction. I have a wealth of experience going through this. I've gone through this myself. I've been walking students through this process for five years now, and it's pretty cool. I'm being a little bit more vocal about it because unfortunately, there's not a lot of people in this industry that are actually giving real advice that know what they're doing. And I want to be that resource for you. So if there's something I can do to get you to the next level, let me know. This has been a great episode. I hope you guys are enjoying this collection of more tangible, actionable advice. And if there's one tiny little takeaway from this episode is to make a move and start thinking about if you're, if you're more academic minded, how can you take all of that information you're learning and leverage it to your advantage? Because I can guarantee you if you're just sitting there and absorbing material and regurgitating it, and even if you're getting great grades, if all you do is regurgitate crap, you're not going to get a great job. It doesn't matter how great your GPA is. It doesn't matter if you're a 4.0. It doesn't matter if you have 45 different extracurriculars on your resume. It matters if you know what you're doing. And if you'd like my help, you can check out learnrobotics.org slash podcast. And I'm here to support you. This has become a lot of fun for me. So reach out if you'd like some help. And I will see you in the next episode. Peace out.